Contractor, no. I will not bow to any sponsor. Product placement, cross promotion, brand endorsements, corporate synergy. Whatever form it takes, it is unrecognizable to us as anything else. To quote former United States Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart in regards to a different kind of product placement, I know it when I see it. It is unmistakable and seemingly inescapable since under the boot of capitalism art requires money to make and distribute and an easy way of getting that money is by highlighting some wealthier person's product in your work and maybe that just means putting your characters in a new car wow there's so many fancy buttons on your steering wheel it's like a spy car that's cool here let me call her yeah or having them eat at a specific restaurant hey, you know that you can get a refill on any drink you want here and it's free. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful restaurant. <laughs> or doing an ad read in the middle of a video. Oh, you caught me. This video is brought to you by The Hall of Sun by Jake. Or maybe it's having a spaceship in your space game that looks like the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. Yeah, so recently Destiny 2 introduced this Ghostbusters-themed cosmetic pack, and it's been stuck in my head ever since. And if I can be real here for a second, nothing really has radicalized me against capitalistic economic systems more than knowing that stuff like this is the cost of trying to make art in the modern world. The feeling deep in my bones, the knowing that one day if I ever want to get my stories out to more people, I too might have to shoehorn in some kind of crass product placement like this. But I don't know why this cosmetic set got me more riled up than any other. It's not like these kind of cosmetic tie-ins are new to Destiny. Already we've had cross-promotion with Mass Effect, The Witcher, Assassin's Creed, The Last of Us, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Ghost of Tsushima, and even the nexus of all intellectual property, Fortnite. Yet, at the end of the day, despite the fact that some of these sets fit a little more nicely into the broader aesthetic of Destiny's sci-fantasy universe, I still can't help getting drawn out of that world anytime I see one of these sets actually in use. Because regardless of how well they're integrated into this world, they smack of big brand energy. I no longer see Destiny. I see Bungie and Sony as corporate entities that are trying to sell me something. And I know it's stupid for me to be so precious with any work of fiction. I'm not the storyteller of this universe. I'm not involved in its crafting. And yet, because I enjoy it so much, I can't help but feel like putting this kind of stuff in the game cheapens the grander elements of the universe. To me, brand tie-ins like this dilute the richness of Destiny's storytelling. Yes, that's an incredibly pretentious thing for me to say about a piece of fiction I enjoy, maybe even a little gatekeepy, but that's how I've broadly felt about all the cross-promotion Destiny has done, with each tie-in chafing to varying degrees my personal storytelling sensibilities. When I see one of these sets in the wild, my brain immediately begins to contort itself to rationalize why I'm seeing the thing I'm seeing. Do I just hand wave away the existence of these cosmetics, compartmentalize them as an aberration of canon non-compliance that doesn't actually exist in this world? Or maybe did I miss the lore dump where the narrative designers at Bungie revealed that there's a big swath of Ghostbusters appreciators amongst the city foundries? And at the end of the day, I often tend towards the former because Moses cannot come down off the, uh, the plateau. the plateau after having a conversation with the Almighty and be carrying a six-pack of Coke? Jesus! You, you should all watch And God Spoke. It is one of the funniest movies I have ever seen, and no one paid me to say that. But even outside the narrative implication of these tie-in cosmetics, there is a second layer to why I balk at seeing cross-promotion like this. It makes me afraid for the future of Destiny. Because here's the thing, Destiny didn't used to do stuff like this. For years we got Destiny expansions that were just Destiny, pure, uncut space wizardry. Then in early 2019, Bungie and longtime Destiny publisher Activision parted ways, leaving Bungie to handle the development and publication of Destiny all on its own. 
Then in early 2022, some three years later, Bungie was bought by Sony for nearly $4 billion, a deal which was completed in July of the same year. And in August, we got the first of these cross-promotional multimedia tie-in cosmetic sets, bringing bits of Epic Games and Fortnite into Destiny, and bits of Destiny into Fortnite and Fall Guys. I'm sorry, my producers are informing me that there was a cross-promotion with Red Bull during the Taken King in 2015, and I I'm quite sure there were actually a lot more like this. I think I may have actually bought some Destiny branded Pop-Tarts around the time of the launch of Destiny 2, but for the sake of this exercise, I'm not including these kind of promotions because there were no Red Bull branded items added into the game. There was no diegetic inclusion of energy drink themed items or vehicles. I mean, can you imagine? I guess the closest we've ever gotten to that is... Or... Okay, that's actually maybe the only time something like this actually works in the world of the story. I could totally believe that this is a real thing that exists in the universe of Mad Max. But back to Fortnite. Given the timing of the promotion, I'm certain the partnership with Epic was well in the works before the purchase and completion of the sale to Sony. But even so, we could assume, rightfully or not, I wasn't in the room where it happened, that the deal with Epic was one Bungie undertook because they needed a cash infusion. The same need for a cash infusion that might convince them to be bought by Sony after three years of being independent. Pure speculation, but a theory I'm not uncomfortable posing here. Then in December of 2022 came a tie-in promotion with Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed, and then we step on the gas. 2023 brought us Lightfall, the penultimate chapter of Destiny's 10-year-long light and darkness saga, but it arrived later than anticipated thanks to a pandemic-related delay of the previous expansion, The Witch Queen, and though Lightfall sold well and broke concurrent player records for Destiny 2, the critical reception, both by professional outlets and players, was less than stellar. The tepid reception of Lightfall suddenly cast major doubts on Bungie's ability to successfully stick the landing of their landmark side sci-fi franchise, but the hits didn't stop there. Soon, the follow-up expansion, The Final Shape, got hit with its own delays, pushing it back from February 2024 to June of the same year, and that increasingly widening gap between tentpole releases meant more months for Bungie without a meaningful cash influx. So what does all this mean? Well, you take a multi-billion dollar buyout by a publicly traded company, add to it a big gap between big expansions, add to that a dwindling player base, and then a string of layoffs in late 2023, and suddenly all I feel when I see this Ghostbusters spaceship is fear. Fear that one of my favorite universes is dying. I know it's unreasonable to assume it would go on forever. In fact, I don't want it to. I always prefer fiction that has a set intended ending. But Bungie has already said they're gonna keep Destiny going after the final shape, but I'm worried they won't be able to. I have hope that the final shape will be able to act as a fitting conclusion to the story I've been following for the last decade, but if it doesn't, would a Stranger Things emote get it there? Would a Barbie-themed helmet? How much of our art must we sacrifice upon the altar of corporate finance? So this is a bit of a dour ending to this week's spotlight, but one that despite everything I did feel compelled to make. How do you feel about cosmetic tie-ins like this? How do you feel about Master Chief being put into Rainbow Six Siege? Do you care? Do you not care? Am I an idiot for caring so much? Let me know down in the comments. Give us that engagement. Boost us in the algorithm. And if you don't think I'm an idiot and like what I'm saying, you should like the video and subscribe to the channel because my name is Jake Terrio and this has been Subpixel Spotlight and I will see you next time.